uh, powered up. I've got the cursor in the middle of the range and I've got it set on E which is here which uh, should be 7.5 megahertz. The output's connected to frequency meter uh, 7.2 to the oscilloscope 7.2 and about 164 millivolts peak to peak and to the spectrum analyzer and I have uh, marker number one set to the peak which is 7.2 megahertz and minus 12 dB now this signal generator does not need a 50 ohm load it's not calibrated in any way other than frequency and uh, it's designed to operate over essentially any load but in my setup I have a 50 ohm load on it by virtue of the fact that the uh, spectrum analyzer is 50 ohms so 50 ohm load even though it's not necessary the oscilloscope is a 1 meg input, so that's no load at all. And you can see at 10 megahertz we have a slightly distorted sine wave, especially at the bottom. And at least two harmonics on the spectrum analyzer. Uh, one at 7.2, one at 14.4, one at uh, 21.5 and maybe we can get no I have to do it manually there's one little vi visible here at 29 or so I'm guessing so we have at least three visible harmonics I will go to F scale which should put us at uh, 21 plus megahertz 19 on the oscilloscope and the peak on the spectrum analyzer is at 19.7 we can see four harmonics now there, there and it's still not picking up on the, on the spectrum analyzer but there's one there. We'll go back to the D range. That should put us at two and a half megahertz. Two point four here. We'll need to reset the spectrum analyzer. All right, now we have lots and lots of harmonics uh, that's the first that's the fundamental second at 4.8 third at 7.2 9.6 see how they go and we can't pick this little one up automatically but it's there We'll go down to C, which should have put us at 900 kilohertz. You can see we've lost some amplitude on the signal generator. And it says 870 kilohertz. That's the fundamental at 1. And we'll go to right up the line. second harmonic, third harmonic, and so on. And we'll go to B, which it puts us at 400, 460 kilohertz. Not sure if we can read this. We 
we've come back again a little bit. We've got a whole bunch of harmonics on the spectrum analyzer. And now it will go down to A, which is going to be impossible to read. We picked up some output on the oscilloscope. We're down to 134 on the frequency meter as well as the oscilloscope. And we're too low for the spectrum analyzer to be effective. So turn the VFO off. And I have a 1 megahertz crystal here. I'll plug it into the crystal socket. And you can see we've got a really weird looking waveform on the oscilloscope. It does indicate 99.9 .9 kilohertz. Spectrum analyzer says 99.6. It's certainly rich in harmonics on the spectrum analyzer. Let's see, it's stop frequency is 10. Let's go to 30. You can see we have harmonics clear up to 15 megahertz at least, which is the center frequency. Lots of harmonics in a thing shaped like this. I'll try to set the generator at uh, 2 megahertz. It should be somewhere around here. Turn the sweep back on. So I'm pretty close to 2 megahertz. Still have our distorted sine wave. We have uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, at least six harmonics showing on the spectrum analyzer. Here in the oscilloscope, we can see the auto oscillator. See on the unit, I've got the uh, BFO off. It doesn't matter if it's on or off. Changes the output a little bit, but by varying the variable portion of the on-off switch, I can increase and decrease the amplitude of the audio signal up to a, an RMS of 15 volts, peak to peak of 42 volts here. It's a distorted sine wave. And it says it's at, the oscilloscope at least, frequency meter says, 349 kilohertz. That's pretty good for a 400 kilohertz oscillator. So that's just the sine wave from the audio output. And it's there as long as we're in modulation position. If I go to external, you see in the scope it disappeared. If I go to sweep, it does a funny thing, but it's not there. Go back down, and there's the signal again. Now, if I turn on the VFO, it should be at 2 megahertz, and the amplitude modulated with the 400 cycle signal. So we'll do that. So if we look at the oscilloscope on the bottom, I'm displaying the 400 hertz audio output. 
and this is a it doesn't look very good, but this is an amplitude modulated 2 megahertz signal. I can vary the modulation by varying the amplitude of the uh, audio output, which is also a percent of modulation. Look at the spectrum analyzer. I've got it. Uh, marker number one set at the peak, which is two point something. See these little things on the rising and falling edges? I'm going to turn down the percent of modulation. And you see they they begin to disappear until finally they're down in the dirt. They are the sidebands created by the 400 cycle oscillator. I'll slow this down a little bit. And you can see there we have the peaks a little bit clearer. You go to the right peak. That should be about 400 cycles down from the peak. And if I vary the percentage of modulation, you see that the little sideband peaks are dying until they finally sort of disappear. So here we are set for external modulation. I've got it hooked to my function generator. This is a one kilohertz signal. Modulation is still pretty funky. It doesn't do well at all on the bottom. Still a sine wave. Carefully note this frequency and it should change by 1000 when I move to the next peak. I'm going to try a square wave now. Things begin to look really funny. And a triangular wave. I can vary the percent modulation with the potentiometer. And there we go down see the peaks beginning to disappear. So we've seen uh, the VFO, we've seen the crystal, we've seen the uh, audio oscillator, and we've seen internal and external modulation. I still have to do the sweep uh, theory, but that's going to come later. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Look at the bottom to see the subdirectories that contain all of the information I've collected to date. Thank you for watching.